Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on this edition, we're going to be looking ahead to Crystal Palace versus Arsenal. The two teams meet at Selhurst Park on Saturday. It is the early kickoff, and Mikel Arteta is looking to make it three Arsenal wins on the bounce and what an incredible feat that would be uh, given where we were when he took over. I'm going to start off by looking at the head-to-head records between the teams, a few statistics uh, and then we'll be moving on to my predicted 11 uh, and what we can expect from Crystal Palace. So, without further ado, let's have a look at some of the statistics uh, between these two sides in recent times. Now, if you want to look back for the last time Arsenal beat Crystal Palace in the Premier League, you have to go back as far uh, as Saturday the 20th of January 2018. Uh, Arsenal beat Crystal Palace 4-1 at the Emirates that day. But since then, we've drawn 2-2 at Selhurst Park. We've lost 3-2 at the Emirates. And we drew, of course, earlier on this season in the home fixture versus Roy Hodgson's men. Now, of course, those games had a little bit of extra spice. Arsenal were linked with Wilfred Zaha, uh, particularly the one earlier on in the season. The deal didn't get done, it couldn't get done because Arsenal simply weren't able or willing to pay what Crystal Palace wanted for the Ivorian. Fast forward though and Crystal Palace uh, came to the Emirates in October and got a a very respectable uh, draw. They were two goals down. Socrates and David Lewis gave us the lead that day. 2-0 up we were um, in just nine minutes and then of course... um, we found ourselves being pegged back uh, by a Luka Milivojevic penalty. He always seems to get those against us and a Jordan IU goal. So that was a really, really disappointing result and one that, uh, you know, contributed to, to Unai Emery eventually being sacked. Now, um, in terms of where the two teams are at the moment in the Premier League, if we have a look at the, the form guides, Arsenal, of course, just the one league win in their last five and that came against Manchester United. Uh, the 2-0 victory, of course, on New Year's Day. Crystal Palace also have just one win in five, but Crystal Palace currently sit above Arsenal. They are in ninth place. We are currently in 10th. Uh, they've won seven this season. We've won just six. Palace have managed seven draws. Arsenal with nine draws. Palace have have lost more than us, though. They've lost seven. Arsenal have lost just six. We score an average of 1.33 goals per match compared to their 0.9 Roy Hodgson's side, though, notoriously stubborn defensively. They have kept six clean sheets this season in comparison to Arsenal's four. The top goal scorer between the two teams is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. He's way out in front uh, with 13. Jordan Ayew and Alexander Lacazette are tied in second with five goals apiece. Uh, in terms of assists, three Arsenal players lead the way. Nicolas Pepe, Danny Ceballos and Seja Kolasinac. Uh, passes completed. Matteo Genduzzi uh, comes in at first. Luka Milivojevic in second uh, and Granit Xhaka in third. Uh, but it seems that they have a more combative nature and that is backed up by the uh, tackling statistics which say that Crystal Palace um, have three players who have made more tackles than anybody in an Arsenal shirt this season. Um So interesting reading there. Now, in terms of how Arsenal uh, will line up or should line up, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I don't suspect that Mikel Arteta will stray too far from this unless he has injury problems, unless he has good reason to. It would be Bernd Leno in goal for me. Ainsley Maitland-Niles at right back. We've not heard anything to suggest uh, that he won't be returning to the squad. A central defensive combination of Socrates and David Lewis with Serge Kanasinac at left back. Xhaka and Torreira in the middle of the park. I still maintain that that is Arsenal's best partnership in my opinion with Mesut Ozil operating in front of them. And then a front three of Alexander Lacazette, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Nicolas Pepe. In terms of the front three, if I was going to make a change, if I had to make a change, um, I'd consider bringing Gabriel Martinelli in there for Lacazette and putting a Bamiang through the middle. Lacazette obviously lacking in confidence in front of goal at the moment. He does work hard. He does battle for the team. Nobody can ever deny that about Alexander Lacazette. But in terms of what he's producing in front of goal, in terms of output at this moment in time, there is a case for him to be dropped, I would say. And you may disagree. Let me know in the comments. Um, and I'd love to hear what you guys uh, have to say, of course. Now, 
one of the problems or a couple of the problems that we experienced against Leeds were that were that we weren't quite getting those forward runs from say Kalasinac at left back um in my opinion it was down to him being tired uh, but they've had since Monday to recover and then of course on the other side Socrates played at right back so we didn't get that support for the right winger which I felt was a problem I expect to see more of that though against Crystal Palace albeit away from home just purely because we've got the right personnel uh, back in those positions assuming that there are no uh, bumps along the way what to expect from Crystal Palace Uh, organization effort hard work and uh They're a team who make you earn the right to play, as we say. They're a team who work extremely hard. They are very, very well drilled under Roy Hodgson. He's a very experienced manager. He's somebody who knows what he's doing. He's somebody who uh, boasts a wealth of experience and somebody who has traditionally given us problems. So it's not going to be an easy game by any means, particularly as we need to go to Selhurst Park, which is never um, a nice place to go. There's always a great atmosphere there. It'll be an early kickoff. I'm sure their fans will be up for it as they always are and and fingers crossed we can do enough and we can start the game with the intensity that saw us pull away against Manchester United, that saw us take the lead against Chelsea. I know we were pulled back eventually but against Leeds we didn't start with that intensity and that's why I believe Arsenal found it so difficult in the early stages. Was it down to fatigue given the number of games we played in such a short period of time? Possibly, Uh, but that's not an excuse. It needs to get better and I think it will get better with time. Um, Fitness levels clearly weren't where they uh, should be. Maybe they were where they needed to be in Unai Emery's eyes, but it's clear that Mikel Arteta's side play with a great deal more intensity. Um, Arteta's given his press conference uh, at the time of recording. Um... Uh, And he's had a few bits and pieces to say, a few interesting comments. Uh, He's spoken about the fact that he's pleased to have had more time with the group, to have been able to implement some things this week, given that over the Christmas period it was back-to-back games and it was pre-match prep followed by post-match recovery over and over again. So Mikel Arteta has had a bit of time here um, and I'm sure he's... uh, implemented some new things and or at least began to implement some of the things that uh, he is uh, looking to bring to the team in the longer term he was highly complimentary of Roy Hodgson um he said for somebody to be able to cope with this level of pressure day in day out for such a long time they deserve a lot of credit and I agree with that Roy Hodgson is a manager that I admire um perhaps Crystal Palace is his level and I don't mean that in a horrible way but in the sense that he has had bigger jobs and maybe not done as well as some people would have hoped. But this is a team who he has very well drilled, he has very well organised and who he continues uh, to get decent results with. Um, Mikel Arteta said that Hector Bellerin is still not ready. He's getting better, he's getting closer to a return, but he's still not there just yet. Um, Mikel Arteta was asked what changed uh, when he came in and what has he done to you know, improve Arsenal's performances and improve everything around the club. And he said that he wanted to change the energy around the team and that things have been better since he's arrived. And he was also asked a little bit about um, his team talk that he gave at half time during the, the Leeds game and how the players have responded to that in training. And he said very well. So it seems like the players are on board. Those are the noises we're hearing. And that is, of course, hugely important because I genuinely believe that Unai Emery lost the players um, a good few months before he was actually sacked which you know would show in the performances that that we were putting in week in week out Um, he was also asked about Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang who of course put in his program notes the other day ahead of the Leeds game that he is very happy to be with Arsenal and that he's 100% committed we've heard those comments uh, on a couple of occasions now in recent weeks and Mikel Arteta said of course the intention is to keep him uh, and that he is confident that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang at this moment in time is happy at Arsenal he did say that a contract extension hadn't been discussed yet um but he was confident that he could keep him and that he is happy uh, with life uh, at the Emirates Stadium. Of course, it's the transfer window. Lots of the talk surrounds uh, that subject at the moment, and Mikel Arteta was quizzed on whether Arsenal would be doing any significant business during this January transfer window, and he said, I'm not expecting big things, Uh, but he did say we have to be looking if we can find options to cover some of the players that we've lost to long-term injury. So Arsenal are looking. That is clear. Arsenal will be active in the January transfer market if the right opportunity comes along, if the right player becomes available. But that's it. 
They're not expecting major things. Mikel Arteta has said that he's managed our expectations. So don't expect a, a marquee signing this month. If we can, I'm sure we're going to plug a few holes here and there. Um, which leads me on to the players that may be departing. Now, David Ornstein reported that Arsenal could be looking to offload as many as 12 players. Uh, that includes, obviously, mostly young and fringe players. Um, but Arteta spoke about the uh, proposed loan moves for Emil Smith-Rowe, who's been linked with a move to Huddersfield. Eddie Nketiah, who's, of course, returned uh, from, a, I guess, an unsuccessful spell at Leeds. And, of course, uh, Tyrese john Jules and... He's spoken with those guys. He said that there are a number of offers for those players um, and that the club and the players will sit down and discuss over the coming days which options are best suited to those players and whether or not they are the right moves and it's the right time to make those moves. So we can expect some update on that in the coming days. Um, so that's Mikel Arteta's uh, press conference. That's what he's had to say. Um, in terms of a prediction for this one, it's really, really difficult to say. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal's away record is, has been poor, hasn't it? But I, I do believe in what Mikel Arteta has done. I do believe there's been a real uplift in the spirit around the place. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say Crystal Palace 1, Arsenal 2. That is my prediction uh, for Saturday's game. Feeling positive um, about that one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, all the usual stuff. Um, and if you're listening via the audio, please, please do leave us a review. Um, I had the pleasure uh, of uh, catching up with Harvey Jones of the Red and Blue site, Crystal Palace fan, a very good friend as well. And here's what he had to say on Saturday's game. Hello, guys. Harvey here from the Red and Blue site YouTube channel, Crystal Palace fan. Thank you so much to Harry for having me on the channel and of course covering a, a quick preview a quick uh, collection of thoughts um from a palace fans point of view uh, in terms of this game uh, early kickoff on saturday how i think it will go um quick preview i i do think that this is a game in recent years that has been very has been a very close affair it's been very close between the two sides um we've had big wins at sellers park against arsenal um obviously under sam allardyce that 3-0 win quite Quite a famous night, just purely from an Arsenal point of view, with the, uh, you know, you're not fit to wear the shirt chance. It was a big night, you know, and it was a big statement from the fans in terms of their anger towards Wenger at that point and the team. Um, and you know, we've had big results. Last year we got a great draw against Arsenal and that it was again frustrating for Arsenal fans at being ahead twice in that game. I think that Games at Sellers Park have always been very close between these two sides since we got promoted. Even when we've lost, it's felt like very close, um, very tight games. And obviously, that's down to the atmosphere we create at Sellers Park. It's down to Arsenal's really poor away record. And also something about playing one of the big six teams. You know, there is something about it with a team like Palace. Going into this, though, I do think it will be very, very hard for us to get something out of it. And there's a number of factors for that. First and foremost, you've got to give credit to Arteta. I think the way he's come into the team, he's... And, Already in the sh such a short space of time, with all the problems Arsenal have, it's such a big project at Arsenal right now. It's already clear that what mentality he's trying to instill, he, what he's trying to do for the players and the team, and you can see there's a philosophy starting to come out of it. And you know, may not be getting the results as of yet, and maybe that will play into our hands a little bit. It's still early days, and you know, when you still have some players in that team that are, let's be honest, below average for Arsenal um, as a football club. Um, that gives you hope that, you know, even being 1-0 up with Arsenal under Arteta, you'd expect them to see it out. But because of some of the players playing right now and not being necessarily Arteta's first choice if he had an op options in the transfer window, um, it gives you belief as a Palace fan that we can always get something out of it. Arsenal very, very poor at, uh, in terms of keeping clean sheets. We have been recently too. So I do think there'll be goals in this. Um, main thing for me though is the, the injury list that Palace have. We've got double figures in terms of injuries. I think this is our worst injury crisis since getting promoted to the Premier League um, back in 2013. Wilf might be a slight doubt for the game. I do think even if he has a slight knock, he will play because he is that important to us. It's just the way we the way we play is just so dependent on Zahar playing. And even if he has a knock, Roy's done it before. I think he will play him. Um, Reader, Vold, Meyer both got knocks against Derby in the FA Cup last week, so they could be out. It's touch and go with them. We're looking at about 12 to 13 first team players missing going into the Arsenal game and I do think that will make a big difference in this I would have gone for a draw I do think Arsenal will sneak it with a combination of the injuries we have the new mentality that Arteta has installed in the team 
But because of these close games we've had in recent years, because it's Arsenal and your away form, let's be honest, it's tragic. Um, there's always a chance. There's always a chance. And the Sellers Park atmosphere, we will be up for it. I think that it's a game that we know we can get something out of because of results in previous seasons. You just never know on the day, but I am predicting an Arsenal win going into this. Thank you once again for tuning in to the Chronicles of Aguna, and we'll be back on Monday with some reaction to that game at Selhurst Park. So until then, take care of yourselves and up the Arsenal.